Uh, the production of the core stage element is currently driving the space launch system program schedule. The program is combining welding techniques and materials, specifically the thickness of the metal, that have not been used before. While establishing new production techniques is laudable, the program has faced numerous setbacks as it is developing these processes and correcting defects. How confident is the program that it and its contractors will have gained enough knowledge to avoid these setbacks and delays for future flight hardware? We've, we've met the challenges of the <clears throat> self-reactant friction stir welding of the thicker materials. We understand now how to do that. We'll still probably continue to refine the welding technique as we go into future pieces, but the basic understanding is in place now. We know how to do the welding. And as I said in my opening remarks, that's also important to the industry as a whole. NASA paved the way by now allowing others to use those same, same techniques in the larger thickness of materials. If you could, what steps does the program and contractor have in place to avoid mistakes, such as uh, welding tool changes that shut down production? We're again carefully monitoring all that activity. We're looking at uh, ways we can do inspection. We knew fairly soon and immediately that there was a problem with our welding when it occurred. So, so the good news was we had tools and techniques in place to find the defects to prevent that from extending into the flight hardware. That was good. The bad thing we didn't know is we fully didn't understand. We had done smaller samples. We had done smaller welding uh, uh, tests but we had not done of any of the magnitude or the scale of which we're trying to do with the full vehicle. So I think we just need to be prepared as we build schedules going forward to know that these first time things that we have never done before of a magnitude that has never been done before may need a little bit of extra time that first time through and not be overly optimistic in our schedule. So we'll build in some time to go ahead and do those kind of things to make sure we don't have that same kind of problem moving forward. And we've identified those areas in the future where we see these first time items, we will put in place processes and procedures to prevent what's, what occurred in the past. The core stage element, again, which is currently driving the SLS program schedule, still has to complete a major integrated test fire, which is called the green test run. The green test run will have the core stage integrated with its four main engines. The tanks will be filled with cryogenic fuel for the first time, and the core stage will be fired for about 500 seconds. The engines have been tested individually, but not all together, which creates a different heat, acoustic, and vibration environment, and this will be the first for the core stage. What areas cause the most concern during this test? Cryogenic fuel piping, leaks, material stresses, et cetera. You know, the teams are really analyzing that test in, in all its detail to make sure that we are really prepared for that test. And one thing we learned out of this last schedule problem is we're going to have a dedicated person and a team that actually will look at that test to make sure we have accommodated and take into account everything that might occur during that test. I think concerns are when you when the, the rocket is designed to come off the launch pad and typically fly, it's not designed to stay in one location for the entire firing. So there could be some heat that builds back into the systems. We've been analyzing that in wind tunnels. We've been looking to make sure we're prepared for that. We've done extensive work on the test stand to look at modeling and testing of how we do the fluid flows. We've looked at um, procedures that we bring in tankers to bring in the liquid hydrogen and oxygen during the test in the most efficient manner. We've protected for slips and schedules. But we see that test coming up after the, the core stage gets delivered to Stennis as one of the key tests and one of the key risks. We, we and the teams will, will, will be fully prepared for that test when it occurs. What potential damage are you testing for that might occur during a nominal test of this nature, such as insulation damage, internal harnesses, boxes coming loose? Just what are you looking for? All those things you describe. I think probably our biggest concern is probably thermal and potential thermal damage to the bottom of the vehicle and what needs to be uh, repaired. We'll have procedures in place to go do those repairs. We'll have alternate techniques that, to fix things if they, if they occur during that testing. So we're, we're actively working that area, and we will have detailed test plans and detailed mitigations for anything that can arise. Thank you, Mr. Gerstenmeyer, and Mr. Chairman, I yield back.